Melbourne is Australia's art and media hub. People come here from all around the country to better their crafts and to network with big names. Films like Chopper, Mad Max, The Castle, Kenny, Romper Stomper, and more recently Ben Hall and Killer Elite have all come out of Melbourne and impressed international audiences. We have a big industry here, but as you can probably guess, it is dominated by the left. However, one well-known director, Richard Walsencroft of the Melbourne Underground Film Festival refuses to kowtow to them. His festival is one of the most popular in Australia, and he often shows films with alternative themes that would otherwise not be given any light from other festivals. It's certainly not a right-wing festival. I really do play a diverse number of works, but we certainly do occasionally play right-wing films. This is the film festival that the left hates. We are here today in one of his studios to have a chat with Richard, as this year's Melbourne Underground Film Festival is just around the corner. Richard, good to meet you. Are we rolling? Yep, we're rolling. What gave you the idea to get into the film industry in the first place? Well, I've been making films really since I was a young teenager, really. Uh, I made my first Super 8 film even before then. When I was 11, 12 years old, I started making Super 8 films. And then um, uh, as a teenager, I began to make more professional kind of works on video. And when I was 16, I worked on a film called Marauders with Mark Savage, whose new film, um, Purgatory Road, is uh, opening night this year at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival. So he's an old independent filmmaker who's a good friend of mine. and. Um, his work, he moved to Los Angeles to make films there, so he's working with good budgets over in America now. So his new film, Purgatory Road, is premiering this year at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival. But yeah, I've been making films myself since I, I was very young. I, I directed my first feature at 21 with John Hewitt. It was called uh, um, Bloodlust, and um, that was a kind of cult hit. It was kind of a vampire gangster film. And then um, I started a nightclub that was kind of famous called The Hellfire Club. And then uh, I made a film called Pearls Before Swine, it was quite political, that's possibly a little bit of the uh, uh, new right, I would say, perspective. It started Boyd Rice, who's a kind of uh, fairly notorious um, uh, kind of avant-garde noise musician, and uh, he's connected to bands like Throbbing Gristle and Einstein and New Barton, and uh, he's known for being a bit political dressing in a kind of slightly fascist way in some right. of the shoots and stuff. So he's kind of almost like proto-alt-right, I would say, almost. He could almost be called one of the founding godfathers of that alt-right movement in many ways, though he probably wouldn't like that description. <laughs> so I worked with him in the 90s and we made that film Pearls Before Swine. Um, that was uh, that played at a whole number of film festivals, Stockholm International Film Festival when Polanski was there and, and played at a whole other number of film festivals all around the world. And um, uh, then I was going to play it at the Melbourne International Film Festival because I thought they would play it because the film was shot in Melbourne, but they rejected it. And when they rejected it, I, I got upset and I wrote this outraged email to a whole to internet films I called Filmnet and uh, I got a response from about 40 or 50 filmmakers saying my film was rejected because it was a vampire film, my film was rejected because it was a lesbian horror movie or something and they all sounded great, they all sounded genre and good fun so I said okay I'll apply to these films so I accepted them all and that's how the first Melbourne Underground Film Festival started in 2000. It started I guess as just a new platform to support uh, independent guerrilla underground low budget genre and also micro budget features and uh, I think it was quite needed, you know, um, some of the filmmakers who were in the first month were James Wan who went on to create the Saw trilogy, became the most successful horror franchise in the history of the world. Um, Greg McLean was in the first one, he went on to make uh, Wolf Creek. Uh, Patrick Hughes was in month one, he went on to direct The Expendables recently with Sylvester Stallone, so it's been a very Promethean festival, like, this festival is the first festival in the world to play the work of these people. So uh, we've continued doing that um, for close to 20 years now. It's become quite an influential, even though a low budget festival, it's become quite an influential and I think um, provocative film festival. At what point in your life did you become political? Wow, that's a pretty good question. Um, I think it was around the time when I was doing Hellfire, really. I never was political and I was probably more a libertarian, a uh, libertarian right, because I was running a successful uh, nightclub business, the Hellfire Club in Melbourne and Sydney. And, um, I just began to read a lot on politics and I began to read a lot on the philosopher Martin Heidegger, uh, who is a right-wing philosopher in many ways. Um, he was a member of the Nazi party, but that's not why I like him. Um, his version of, of, of politics is very quite different to what the Nazis were, but he, for some reason, aligned himself for a period. Uh, and I became very influenced by Heidegger, who is considered possibly the greatest um, philosopher of the 20th century. He invented his existentialism. He was kind of before Jean-Paul Sartre. And, um, 
is just an incredibly profound uh, German philosopher, probably the most profound philosopher after Hegel, you know, and Kant. Yeah. So uh, he's extremely influential. I got interested in him, and then I just became interested in politics. And uh, just at the same way, I became interested in philosophy. And so after running the Hellfight Club for about 10 years, uh, I did quite well out of that, and I became you know, financially successful. And I decided to go back to university, and I didn't study film because I was already making films. I studied political philosophy, so I did a political philosophy degree at Trove University, and I got a Bachelor of Arts with uh, with a year of honours there, and um, developed my own thesis. <laughs> Do you think that the arts has been taken over by the left? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, it wasn't so bad, you know, growing up. Um, I think in the um, 80s and 90s, it wasn't so bad. Um, uh, there was more kind of a, a broad uh, spectrum of what you could discuss, but of late, you know, the whole, I'm, I'm very much against the whole phenomena of political correctness, and I've seen that really come to the fore in the last 15 years. I think it's been problematic, and obviously what happened with the Melbourne Underground Film Festival last year, um, you know, this goes to illustrate the exact point when I made my comment in relation to the, uh, you know, yes and no vote, you know, which I thought was ridiculous. Last year, he posted a rant on his Twitter account condemning the result of the marriage plebiscite. He has since come under attack from the establishment left in the arts industry for what he wrote. What were you thinking last year making those comments? Did you <laughs> expect the backlash that came along after it? Did I expect it? Um, not really, no. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I'm not even particularly opposed to gay marriage. You know, I mean, obviously I'm a bit of a social libertarian. I say I had problems with some elements of economic libertarianism, but in relation to social libertarianism, I don't have too much of a problem with it. Um, uh, I mainly wanted to argue the no point because everybody, literally everybody within the arts community, even right wingers, were arguing um, for yes. And I found that a bit of a high of mind and I have a natural contrarian in nature. And I have since I was in, uh, probably in primary school, I was just, you know, con contravening the teacher just to be a smart ass. So I'm just a bit that way. And um, so I wanted to argue the no point and find if I could have good reasons to argue it. So I did, and uh, I mean, I didn't think I did that, that well or whatever, but I had a few arguments with people. I enjoyed that, and then on the day when Yes won, I posted what's called a black pill post within the, you know, the new right community, which is like, I guess when Trump got in, you know, people on the left were like, oh my God, you know, a fascist runs America, and this is the end of the world, and they write these terrible, you know, doom and gloom posts. Now, no matter what you think of Trump, he probably isn't quite as bad as many of those posts. So I wrote this doom and gloom, post in relation to um, uh, the, the yes vote winning, which I think was over the top, and I don't fully agree with a lot of things I said, but <laughs> I wrote it, and uh, then someone took a screenshot of it, and it went viral within the arts community. So, hmm. um, so I didn't mean it deliberately to you know, go viral or whatever. So um, and I do have a number of friends within the LBGT community, um, and we've supported the LBG community at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival. We've played the work of Bruce LaBruce, who's one of the major LBGT independent filmmakers in the world, and he has given us uh, his new film for this year's Melbourne Underground Film Festival as a sign of solidarity. So. Indeed, Richard did, back in 2010, play Bruce LaBruce's film L.A. Zombie at Muff, which is quite possibly the gayest film ever made. Like, can I even show this in the video? Like, can I show this? It was so gay, in fact, that Victoria Police raided his house the following month looking for copies. Victoria Police. There were fears that you were going to... Resign. Resign, yeah. I was going to step down for a year or two, and um, um, that was my initial reaction, because it was very intense, the, uh, the original kind of attack. But then, um, you know, uh, oddly enough, um, this was the biggest year of entries our festival ever had. Like, you know, we would normally have, I don't know, about six or seven hundred entries uh, to the festival this year. We had over 2,000 entries. Wow. It's like incredible, like three times as big as normal, thanks to all this publicity. Right. It was around that time that I realized that, no, this has kind of worked and helped us apply for the festival. This has actually publicized it. And I thought, well, this is an important time to stand up for free speech. So um, Frank Hausner, who was going to take over, has decided to start his own film festival called the Oz International Film Festival. That's happening one month after month. And it's going to be like Muff, but a slightly more politically correct version. <laughs> but I'm going to keep Muff as the, uh, you know, Completely incorrect, mischievous festival that it is. When did you find out that the backlash from last year had worked in your favour? Well, I guess it was, I mean, um, it was funnily enough, uh, I presented some films at Earthcore, which is like a dance event. Um, the controversy happened a week before Earthcore. It happened after Muff last year, but a week before Earthcore. And, you know, there must have been a thousand people online having a whinge about me. And I thought, this is going to be terrible. I'm going to be at this public event. People are going to come up and, I don't know, tell me off at least, or maybe someone's going to do something. 
Anyway, I went to the event, not one person mentioned it to me, and it made me realise that the real world is different to the internet world. When someone's focused on getting here, it's different. You know, because it's like a it's like a core group of social justice warrior people, and they all argue. When they get onto a topic, they uh, they love to, you know, slag someone off or whatever, but then a week later, the, someone else came up to tear the pieces, and so I was on the back burner again. So, you know, it was like that, really. And, um, and then after about three months of um, just it cooling down, I realised that, you know, and when I had my first meeting with Frank, you know, and he just said what he wanted to do, I thought, well, that we should just, you know, basically two festivals could come out of this, and it'll be a win-win. And uh, so that's what we decided to do. So, you know. so about three months after the controversy, we decided to, I decided to stay on, and I publicly announced it on Michael Redder's uh, podcast online, which is put in Wollstonecroft under his eye the video will come out. <laughs> nice. Um, so, I've heard that the left have been planning a few protests, possibly in some other resistance to this year's festival. Well, well I don't know. Um, we'll see. I mean, you know, they did the platform us. We had Club Voltaire as a venue this year, and we announced it publicly about two weeks ago, and they contacted them, and the venue pulled out. Right. So we now have a new venue. I won't say what it is in this video, but um, yeah, we've got another venue, and hopefully they'll stand by us. But, you know, we've also got backups, no matter what happens. So the festival will be happening. We have a venue in Moorabbin, that's owned by somebody uh, who is sympathetic to this new politics and um, is certainly a, a very strong freedom of speech campaign and will not pull out. So the festival will be going ahead um, at this venue in Moorabbin no matter what. And But we have this other venue in the city we'll be announcing next week, but they're very strong as well. So uh, it'll be happening. The catalogue will be online next week, so just check it out and come along. And, um, you know, I think it should be a good festival. I drew all the attention. I think it's going to be quite busy. <laughs> but do you think there will be protests? There might be, there might be, and we're ready. We've got a group of security who are going to help us um, do things and maintain security at the venue and at the event, so we should be okay. Um, but really, mainly I think it's about people complaining, and I also think they realise that they publicised the hell out of the festival through this. <laughs> I think a few of them have stopped complaining about it, so I think maybe they've learned their lesson that, you know, if they complain, they're going to just pack us out every night, you know, mm -hmm. so they're probably not going to do that. Do you think that political correctness is stopping a lot of great films from being made? Um, I think that, you know, I mean, in relation to, like, say, the, the funding bodies, they only fund left-wing films that present a certain kind of multicultural, you know, tolerant, you know, you know, view of what's called the new left, you know, and they don't, I mean, they claim to love diversity, but they don't love diversity of ideas. So, you know, I think that's a real problem. I mean, if you love diversity, why don't you actually love diversity of ideas? Why don't you, I mean, the ABC claims it's not biased. I mean, to me, the ABC the national broadcast is as biased as Fox News. Fox News is obviously biased towards the right, and ABC is obviously biased towards the left. And I think it's ridiculous to argue that it isn't. So, you know, I think that's a problem, especially for a national broadcaster. You know? And I also don't think that a few billionaires owning um, stations in America, I don't call that the free press. I mean, you know, that's just a few billionaires inserting their opinions. So I, I have, I have, Questions in relation to what would be called economic libertarianism as, it's, as it applies to mega rich people. My time with Richard has been, as they say, white pilling. He has shown us that the left doesn't have a complete monopoly on the arts industry in Melbourne. With time, more and more content creators of the alt media will flock to festivals like this and help bring the arts back to the free speech platform that it was always meant to be. I probably can announce it here. I think we're going to be playing Lauren Southern's Farmlands. Um, we've been in contact with her, so uh, she's giving us permission to play it. So, um, and we've also got a film by Robert Stark called Supply. He's someone who's connected to the new right or the old right. So we're going to play a documentary he's made. Um, this is going to be on one night during the festival. So there's a whole number of diverse works, but we're not going to shy away from playing stuff related to this new politics. Particularly when they brought it up, I've always actually attempted to keep my politics slightly in the background. And it should be noted that this comment was not something that was in the Muff catalogue that I'd said. This was something from my own Facebook page. And this is this new totalitarianism that anything anybody says anywhere. We're living in this kind of 1984 kind of totalitarian state. And they say we are supposedly the fascists. They should have a look in the mirror. They're behaving like Stalin or like, um, like Big Brother, you know, well before. And, who, and who's standing up for free speech? Apparently the fascists or the new right or the old right. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, you know, I think it's a funny age we're living in. I think times have changed. And, um, you know, I don't know what's that line. It's like the, uh, the, uh, the new right is the old left and the new left is the old right. There you go. There's something to amuse on. Someone said that rather philosophically in the uh, Facebook community. And there's something to think about that. Mm -hmm. 
The Melbourne Underground Film Festival begins on Friday the 26th of October. Visit their website for more information. The link is in the description.